Long before Grey's Anatomy, there was General Hospital. But after 60 years on the air, poor Charles has seen its share of real-life losses. Here are some of the beloved GH stalwarts who have passed on but are not forgotten. Lindsay Perlman played barista Margaret on General Hospital in 2020. Despite only appearing in a couple of episodes, she had some intense scenes, including getting caught up in a brutal shootout. In addition to the soap, she appeared in Empire, Chicago Justice, and even in a parody short of Keeping Up with the Kardashians called Cam Kardashian. All right with you, bright eyes. If we come back. Anytime. It's great meeting you, Mike. She was reported missing in February 2022 and was found dead by suicide days later. Perlman, who was 43, was survived by her husband, Vance Smith. Following her death, he wrote in a sense-deleted Instagram post, She's gone. I'm broken. General Hospital exec Frank Valentini posted about the loss on X, praising Perlman's performance on the show. Meanwhile, Danielle Pinnock of Young Sheldon fame wrote, She was hilarious, goofy AF, stunning, and ridiculously gifted. Just talked to her two weeks ago. It feels surreal that she is gone. As duplicitous Edward Quartermain, John Engel personified the greed of the formidable General Hospital antagonist. The seasoned star played the Quartermain patriarch for nearly 20 years. Having found fame later in life, he joked to the Los Angeles Times that, as an older actor, his roles followed a general pattern, saying, I've either married someone, buried them, fired them, judged them, or lectured to them. Ingle died of cancer in September 2012, aged 84. Speaking with Soaps.com not long before his death, Ingle was excited for his future on the series with a new head writer taking over, saying, Jill Farron Phelps, executive producer, said the other day in a meeting, you'll be happy because you'll all have a story, which is new. A lot of us haven't had a story for some time. ABC paid tribute to the General Hospital veteran, whose final episode aired just days before his passing. In a bittersweet goodbye to the star, the network wrote, and with a simple I love you too, a thumbs up and a smile, we say goodbye to John Ingalls' indelible depiction of Edward Quartermain. His bigger-than-life portrayal will live on in the hearts of countless fans. I love you too. Jay Pickett initially joined the General Hospital cast as Lorenzo Alcazar before being cast in a permanent role as Detective David Harper in 2007. Detective Harper was heavily involved in investigating the feud between the Corinthos and Zakara mob families. In addition to General Hospital, Pickett appeared in a number of other projects, including On Days of Our Lives, Dexter, and a handful of Westerns. While filming the movie Treasure Valley in 2021, Pickett died suddenly on set from a heart attack. As of 2023, Treasure Valley has not been completed. Following Pickett's death, GH paid homage to him with an In Loving Memory segment. Peter Fascinelli, Pickett's co-star in Catch the Bullet, mourned his loss, telling Us Weekly, The beauty about film is his performance will live on. Pickett was an avid fan of westerns, which made his passing bittersweet, since he died doing what he loved best. His Treasure Valley co-star Jim Heffel posted on Facebook, Yesterday I lost a good friend and the world lost a great person. Jay Pickett decided to ride off into the heavens. Jay died sitting on a horse ready to rope a steer, the way of a true cowboy. Shortly before his death, Pickett spoke to Idaho statesmen about his role in Treasure Valley, explaining that the film was particularly close to his heart as he grew up around cowboys in the American Northwest. Shell Kepler played General Hospital's nurse Amy Vining for 23 years. Known for her wild flaxen and locks and over-the-top makeup, Kepler perfectly embodied the gossipy nurse, not to mention 80s hairspray chic. Back in 1982, she was thrilled to have landed the role, telling CBC, I love playing Amy. She's a kid, and I love being a kid. She's one of the most fun characters on the show, and I still haven't seen anybody on daytime TV or primetime TV, for that matter, who is similar to Amy in character. Apart from her acting work, Kepler launched a successful clothing line for the Home Shopping Club, which raked in a handsome $20 million in 1994 alone. Sadly, in 2008, Shell Kepler died of kidney failure at age 49. In the wake of her untimely death, Kepler's co-star, Jacqueline Zeman, shared, she also liked to custom make gifts for her family and friends. She had a big, generous, loving heart, and she was a special friend to me. Kepler may have been taken too soon, but she will always be remembered by those whose hearts she touched. Acting vet Philip Baker Hall appeared on General Hospital in 1983 as Judge Simpson to officiate the wedding of Lila and Edward Quartermain. His General Hospital stint wouldn't be the last time Hall would play a man of the law. Speaking with AV Club in 2012, Hall joked that he was accustomed to playing judges, remarking, 
Life has its own little twists and turns. You never know where things are going. I'm sure you can appreciate presiding at trials can often be rather tedious, and uh, hearing some cases, I get a very jaded view of human nature. Perhaps one of his most famous television roles was Joe Bookman, the library cop on Seinfeld, in which he memorably lectured Jerry on the dangers of not returning library books, in the style of a 1940s film noir detective. Hall also starred in a number of indie films, including Lars von Trier's Dogville and Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights and Magnolia, in which he played a shady game show host. Hall died in June 2022 at age 90 from complications of emphysema. The official Seinfeld X account paid tribute to Hall, tweeting, The great Philip Baker Hall will forever be remembered by Seinfeld fans as the hard-nosed library detective Mr. Bookman. His talent will be cherished. Housekeeper Alice Gunderson was accustomed to dealing with the nonstop drama of the Quartermain clan. As noted by Soaps in Depth, Alice's unrequited feelings for Luke Spencer were at the center of many of her storylines, and Bergen Williams inhabited the character with pathos. In addition to General Hospital, Williams appeared in other medical-themed TV shows such as Scrubs and Nip Tuck. Morning, ma'am. I can't move my head. So what? Williams had been living with Wilson's disease, a rare condition caused by a genetic mutation that inevitably leads to both physical and mental decline. The disease is usually fatal. Following her diagnosis, she left General Hospital in 2014. As a result, she lost her health insurance. Williams' sister Linda tweeted, Her disease made it impossible for her to speak her lines the same way as before, so they made her quit. I'm sad they didn't just give Big Alice Wilson's disease on the show so she could keep acting and keep her health care. Williams died in 2021 at age 62. Her death devastated her General Hospital co-stars. Kimberly McCullough, who played Robin Scorpio on the soap, tweeted, Bergen was an incredible force to be reckoned with, and I'm so sorry to hear of her passing. Meanwhile, Brandon Barash, a.k.a. Johnny Zakara, hailed Williams, posting, She was a special one who imbued truly radiant energy into every room she entered. Veteran actor Susan Brown was popular among General Hospital fans as psychiatrist Dr. Gail Baldwin. Brown even received a Daytime Emmy nomination for her performance in 1979. She left the series in 1985, but returned in 1992 on a recurring basis. Brown made her final GH appearance in 2004, but the character wasn't written out of the series until 2019 when she was killed off camera. Aside from General Hospital, Brown appeared on other popular soap operas, including As the World Turns and Santa Barbara. She also moonlighted as an interior designer. Brown died in 2018 at age 86. According to Variety, she had been living with Alzheimer's disease. Her co-star, Ken Schreiner, who played Gail's son, tweeted that Brown was one of his besties both on and off screen. Nancy Lee Gron, famed for portraying General Hospital character Alexis Davis, penned a sweet tribute to Brown, writing, Thinking about my castmate neighbor and gracious, classy, lovely woman, Susan Brown, today. No one ever looked more beautiful while walking their dog three times every day, sending love and respect to her family. In January 2019, General Hospital aired a tribute show to Brown in which her co-stars reminisced about their time working with her. For decades, Stuart Damon expertly embodied the troubled, occasionally homicidal Dr. Alan Quartermain. In a 1981 interview with the Boston Globe, Damon explained that while he enjoyed playing the snooty doctor, he couldn't be any further from him in real life, explaining, I'm nothing like Quartermain. I've been known to show up on the set wearing running shorts, a baseball cap worn sideways, speaking with a pronounced lisp. The morning rehearsal is the time to be silly. In 1999, he won an Emmy for the role. During his acceptance speech, he admitted that taking home the award had fulfilled his lifelong ambition of playing a character who would remain beloved and remembered by audiences. Prior to entering the world of soap operas, Damon appeared in a number of musicals on Broadway and London's West End in the 1950s and 60s. In 2021, Damon died of kidney failure at the age of 84. In a Facebook post, reporter George Pinocchio revealed, he'd been struggling with renal failure for the last several years. Pinocchio was in contact with Damon's son, Christopher, who told him, it was absolutely his favorite place to be. He loved playing Alan and was so appreciative of that role and that job. It was his passion. Following his death, General Hospital aired a tribute to Damon's life and career. Peter Hansen began playing lawyer-turned-mayor of Port Charles, Lee Baldwin, in 1965 and continued in the role until 2004. In contrast to the cast of scheming characters in General Hospital, Lee was altruistic and compassionate with a strong sense of justice. Though he's best known for his role on the long-running soap, Hansen had over 100 credits to his name, including roles in a number of classic films. 
With his dashing movie star looks, Hansen shared screen time with some bona fide Hollywood legends like Alan Ladd in the 1950 western Branded. Additionally, he appeared in episodes of classic sitcoms such as The Golden Girls and Cheers, in which he played the chairman of the corporation that owns the bar, scaring the bejesus out of Rebecca Howe. Hansen also appeared in Danny DeVito's irreverent 1989 black comedy The War of the Roses alongside A-listers Kathleen Turner and Michael Douglas. Despite his on-screen success, Hansen's life was beset by tragedy. Betty, his wife of 50 years, died in 1993. He found love again with his partner Barbara Wenzel, but Hansen died in 2017 at age 95. Following his death, the official General Hospital account tweeted, He will forever be a part of the GH legacy. Barbara Tarbuck played the benevolent Jane Jacks on General Hospital from 1996 until 2010. Tarbuck was a prolific actor, having appeared in dozens of TV shows. Notably, she collaborated with Ryan Murphy on multiple occasions, appearing in Nip Tuck, Glee, and as Mother Superior Claudia in American Horror Story Asylum. American Horror Story turned out to be one of her final major roles. Tarbuck was devoted to her craft and also loved to teach acting. On her personal website, she wrote, Teaching and acting and directing all feed one another in me. I am as stimulated and questioned by the young people in my life as I am by new material. On stage, before the camera, and in the classroom are the questions, demands, disappointments, delights that feed my soul. Tragically, Tarbuck contracted the rare Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, also known as human mad cow disease. Creutzfeldt-Jakob leads to neurological degeneration and loss of muscle control. There's no cure or treatment available for the deadly brain disease, and it's invariably fatal, according to a 2020 study. Tarbuck died in 2016 at age 74. She was preceded in death by her husband, James Dennis Connolly, who passed in 2005. Upon news of her death, General Hospital honored her memory on Instagram. Her co-star, Ingo Rademacher, who played Jasper Jacks, wrote that he was shocked by Tarbuck's death, sharing, She was the kindest, warmest person. Far too many stars died in 2021, including many General Hospital alumni. John Riley was famed for his role as the devious and devilish Sean Donnelly on the soap opera. He was at the center of numerous memorable storylines, including his character's run-in with terrorists, which resulted in him being added to a hit list, getting caught in a mobster shootout, then being poisoned by his ex-friends. Away from the drama of Port Charles, John starred in Dallas and Sunset Beach and played the father of Jenny Garth's character Kelly Taylor on Beverly Hills 90210. John Riley died in 2021, aged 86. He was survived by his wife and three kids. Following his death, his daughter Caitlin Riley, who is a social media star known for her comedic videos, told CNN, He was the greatest man alive, a true gentleman. On Instagram, she posted, the brightest light in the world has gone out. Imagine the best person in the world. Now imagine that person being your dad. General Hospital aired a tribute to John in the wake of his death. In a statement, the show's executive producer, Frank Valentini, praised the late actor as an immensely talented star who helped to cement the soap's legacy with his portrayal of Sean. Lila Quartermain, played by Anna Lee, is one of the most iconic characters in General Hospital history. A year into her role, Lee was paralyzed from the waist down in a car accident, but continued to act from her wheelchair. Regarding her portrayal of Lila, she once told the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Foundation's Archive of American Television, she's the only nice person in the family. Edward is an old curmudgeon who bullies everybody, and Alan is a nice man, but he doesn't have too much to do and they're always quarreling, either splitting up or getting divorces or something. Lila's the only one who has a calm, peaceful quality. Born in England, Lee was dubbed the British bombshell and starred in classic films such as How Green Was My Valley and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, alongside legends Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. As noted by The Guardian, Lee moved to Hollywood during the outbreak of World War II as her husband, director Robert Stevenson, was a pacifist. In 2003, Soap Central reported that her general hospital contract had been terminated, which infuriated the veteran actor, since she claimed the powers that be had promised her a lifetime contract with the soap. ABC claimed that no such contract ever existed. That's it! Dominican Republic, here I come! Lee, who was 90 years old at the time, deemed the dismissal to be flagrant ageism. In an interview with The Telegraph, she said, they told me age had nothing to do with it. I mean, come on, this is youth-obsessed Hollywood. Of course age is against me. The following year, Lee died of pneumonia at age 91. Indeed, the seasoned actor predicted her longevity, telling The Telegraph, I want to die with my boots on. 
Gerald Anthony played Marco Dane, a character that originated on One Life to Live before crossing over to General Hospital. As noted in Soap Opera Babylon, he was daytime's answer to Al Pacino, short, wiry, and explosive. In 1993, Anthony won the Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actor for his portrayal of Marco, regarding the unprecedented fame he experienced as a result of playing the devilishly handsome antagonist, Anthony was charmingly self-deprecating. In a 1989 interview with the Chicago Tribune, he remarked, I'd say the hair has receded a lot. I saw some of the old pictures of myself and man, I gotta tell you, I look different. I wanna say, who is that guy? I was this hip, happening young guy, now I'm a man. In addition to the two aforementioned soaps, Anthony appeared in Wise Guy, L.A. Law, and Another World. His final role was in Spike Lee's indie dramedy, She Hate Me, released the year of his death. Tragically, Anthony died by suicide in 2004. He was 52. The actor was buried beside his father, who died two years earlier. Following Anthony's death, soap producer Frank Valentini told Soap Opera Digest, his dedication to his craft was tireless. Robin Strasser, Anthony's co-star in One Life to Live, paid tribute to him, saying, Anthony was a superb human being, a great actor, so much fun to be around, so mesmerizing in his choices as an actor. Norma Connolly was famed for playing Ruby Anderson, a sex worker turned diner owner on General Hospital. Connolly was a mainstay on the soap, having played Ruby for nearly 20 years. Away from the cameras, she was a tireless activist, dedicated to raising awareness of AIDS. She was on the board of Hollywood Helps, and she involved her soap opera co-stars in 1992's Soap Star Spectacular, an event organized to bring attention and support to people with AIDS. Connolly also spoke out against the sexism in Hollywood and campaigned for women to be offered roles with greater gravitas in the industry, both behind and in front of the camera. Connolly was a classically trained actor who starred in Tennessee Williams' A Streetcar Named Desire and Night of the Iguana, as well as The Crucible by Arthur Miller. She also appeared in Alfred Hitchcock's film The Wrong Man. She was beloved by both her co-stars and family. A grandmother of two, she once said, "...the delight of my old age is spoiling them rotten." In 1998, Connolly died after suffering a stroke aged 71. She was preceded in death by her husband, noted television writer Howard Rodman. On General Hospital, Ruby was peacefully killed off away from the cameras a year after Connolly's death. If you remember Lucille Wall, you have to be an OGGH fan. Wall appeared in season one of General Hospital back in 1963. The actor portrayed Lucille March Weeks, the head nurse at the series' eponymous hospital through 1976. Her years of work on the show even earned her a special Emmy. Despite her departure from the nurse's station, Wall continued to make guest appearances on the soap into the early 80s. Prior to her work in Port Charles, Wall already had decades of success under her belt in another branch of showbiz, radio. The Chicago-born star's prolific voice work on radio shows like Collier's Hour, Lorenzo Jones, and The Adventures of Barbara Wayne led to her being dubbed the Love Story Girl by listeners in the early 1930s. However, Wall was best known for voicing the title role on Portia Faces Life. So much so that when the Los Angeles Times questioned former GH associate producer Kylie Masterson about Wall's on-screen debut, she replied, We got hundreds of letters and calls when she first went on television. People had never seen her face, but they recognized her voice from radio and wrote to ask if she had indeed been Portia. In July 1986, just a few years after her final General Hospital appearance, Wall died in a Reno, Nevada nursing home at age 88. She left behind no survivors. General Hospital lost a fan favorite and a legacy cast member in May 2023. Jacqueline Zeman played the lovable nurse Bobby Spencer on the series for a whopping 45 years, beginning in 1977. Zeman remained with the show through 2010 before taking a short break and returning on a recurring basis from 2013 until the year of her death. I used to beat up rich girls like you in Florida for sport. It's one of those street things you never really forget. In a 1982 interview with the Los Angeles Times, Zeman said of her best-known character, "...Bobby has been a fascinating person for me to play. I get to do all the things that most women think about but wouldn't dare." During her time on the soap opera, Zeman earned four Daytime Emmy Award nominations, three for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, and one for Outstanding Lead Actress, though she never took home a statue. It was GH executive producer Frank Valentini who broke the sad news of her death, taking to X to write, on behalf of our General Hospital family, I am heartbroken to announce the passing of our beloved Jackie Zeman. Just like her character, the legendary Bobby Spencer, she was a bright light and a true professional that brought so much positive energy with her work. 
Bobby Spencer was an experience. Soon after, Zeman's family confirmed to the Los Angeles Times that she'd passed at the age of 70 following a cancer diagnosis. She survived by two daughters, Cassidy and Lacey. General Hospital lovers will recognize Annie Wershing, the actor who is perhaps best known for her work as Renee Walker on 24, as well as for voicing Tess in the video game The Last of Us, got a big break when she joined the cast of GH back in 2007. But you know, General Hospital was a big one for me because it was the first time that I was like on TV really regularly. In March of that year, Wershing took on the role of Amelia Jaffe, a woman who arrives in Port Charles to expose resident Sam McCall, played by Kelly Monaco. In an interview with Soaps at the time, Wershing commented on her chemistry with Monaco, saying, We're just kind of a good match. I'm not really a girly girl, and she's not either. Wershing remained on the series through that September, though she was temporarily replaced by Darby Stanchfield for a spell in May, ultimately appearing in 80 episodes. Following a 2020 cancer diagnosis, Wershing died in January 2023 at the age of 45. She survived by her husband, fellow actor Stephen Full, and their three sons, Freddie, Archie, and Ozzy. In a statement shared with The Hollywood Reporter, Full said in part, There is a cavernous hole in the soul of this family today, but she left us the tools to fill it. She found wonder in the simplest moment. She didn't require music to dance. She taught us not to wait for adventure to find you. Go find it, it's everywhere, and find it we shall. In 2014, Billy Miller joined the cast of General Hospital as beloved character Jason Morgan, filling the shoes of the actor who originated the role, Steve Burton. It's great. It's not my first rodeo. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done All My Children and then Young and the Restless, and this is a very big one. Miller's work on the show would not only earn him a 2018 Daytime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor, but when Burton returned to the show in 2017, Miller morphed into playing the character's twin, Drew Kane. Miller, who previously made a name for himself as Billy Abbott on The Young and the Restless, for which he was awarded three daytime Emmys, eventually left General Hospital in 2019. Upon his GH exit, Miller stated in part to viewers via his manager's ex account, Instead of sadness, I am filled with gratitude for all your support, encouragement, and every emotion shared. I cherish the journey we have taken together. Thank you for allowing me into your home and lives. In September 2023, Miller's manager would break the tragic news of Miller's death, revealing to Variety that the actor had been dealing with manic depression prior to his passing. Patricia Miller, the late actor's mother, shed further light on his mental health struggles and cause of death in a statement, reading, He fought a long, hard, valiant battle with bipolar depression for years. He did everything he could to control the disease. He loved his family, his friends, and his fans, but in the end, the disease won the fight and he surrendered his life. Billy Miller was just 43 years old. If you or anyone you know needs help with mental health or is in crisis, contact the relevant resources below. The Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741741. Call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI-6264 or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org.